welcome back everyone, Twitch is here, and I am back yet again for yet another Marvel Legends video. Today, we're going to be checking out two brand new installments for the new 85 Years of Marvel subline with the Astonishing Wolverine and the Superior Spider-Man. And yes, that is some brand new packaging and... Well, let's say should be the packaging going forward for all the new Marvel Legends and kind of across the Hasbro family of brands. Now, Wolverine, astonishing Wolverine, looking all snazzy in his blues and yellows. Quite a few accessories in the box. That's always nice to see. Again, Marvel celebrating 85 years, which is all kinds of crazy. And I like just the artwork all over the box. That's a nice touch. Here's the barcode. Mine came in from Entertainment Earth. And just give me a second, I'll do my little spiel, but that's coming up just as a heads up. The Superior Spider-Man. Now, I actually enjoyed seeing Otto Octavius as Peter Parker as Spider-Man. That was fairly interesting when they did that back in the comics. And I enjoy the artwork, the box, everything looks good. I'm not saving the boxes, these are all going to be ripped out. But for those of you that are inbox collectors... You probably will like it. And here's the barcode. Likewise, these will hit stores. But like I said, mine came in from Entertainment Earth, of which I'm going to tell you about them right now. So if you are interested, you can head over to EntertainmentEarth.com. You can pre-order both of these if you'd like, or if you see something else there. Anything over 79 bucks, it all ships free. If the item is in stock, and that's key, my links will give you an automatic 10% off. So... Maybe buy stuff that's pre-orderable. Maybe buy stuff that's in stock. Save some cash, hopefully, with the prices on these figures. Yikes. 25 bucks for Wolverine. 30 bucks for Superior Spider-Man. Just as a heads up. But we're going to see how these all stack up in relation to the price. Marvel Legends. Just the collectability of them in general. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Marvel Legends from their 85th anniversary line of Marvel, not Marvel Legends, that's key, the Superior Spider-Man and the Astonishing Wolverine. And so now here's Logan all out of the packaging, and I gotta say, this definitely takes me back to the original Toy Biz Apocalypse Build-A-Figure Wave with the first release of the Astonishing Wolverine. However, this one now comes with alternate hands, an open hand, a pointing hand, so you can flat out tell Spider-Man, watch your mouth, pal, being a mutant's a gift. Cal Dodd did it much better, but you get the idea. And yes, he also comes with fisted hands of which the claws are retracted and you have the silver outlets painted on top of the gloves. You also get an unmasked Wolverine head portrait. If I've said it once, I'll say it again. This is one of the best unmasked Logan head portraits that Hasbro Marvel Legends has ever done. The hair looks like hair. It doesn't look like a hair helmet. He doesn't look like a grandma. The paint is gorgeous. They did a great job. With the actual head portrait on the body, yeah, I would say that that looks pretty cool. I'm not going to say that I'm going to use it, though, because this Wolverine head portrait is stellar. I absolutely love this. It's a grit and teeth angry. He just looks mean. And that's what I want to see with a Wolverine head portrait. The claws are great. The colors are great. Even though I will say this is not going to be my ideal costume for Wolverine in any way, shape or form. It's close enough to what I like for Wolverine yellows and blues and all that. The yellows fairly match one another. That's always something with Wolverines and such. It's just always a thing. The yellows of the costume match, but then when you see the yellows on the boot right there, because they painted them, they're a little bit of a darker yellow. If it's supposed to be the same as the costume, if it's supposed to be different, it doesn't look bad, but you can tell that that's painted, that's plastic, if that makes sense. I like all the little nuances of the costume, the folds, the peg holes on the bottom of the feet, in case you need to stand him up, but he stands pretty well on his own. The arm hair, well done. I like the transition. It's only on one side, but there is sculpted arm hair in the actual flesh, so it's not very jarring to the eye. You're like, okay, yeah, there's still hair there. I get it. I like how they did that transition. Underneath the arms, you'll soon see that the blue will kind of go onto the flesh right there at the bicep. And I've seen a lot of people mention that and point it out. It definitely does it on mine, so keep that in mind. The more you kind of grind it up against it, 
you're gonna take some paint off. And that's a little disappointing. It's a bummer. I, I don't want a bunch of blue on the underside of the arms. You got plenty of abs, ab crunch. It will kind of knock into the belts, but it doesn't hinder the articulation, just as an FYI. And the belt's painted nicely too. You got the red and black X with the silver capsules right there for the buckle. You have a little bit of a drop down hinge. The legs, they'll kick out. You got double jointed pinless knees and arms. Eh? People likes that. You got some feet articulation. That one's a little stuck there. This one works fine. Just go easy. That's something I have pointed out with recent Marvel Legends. It seems to be the knees and the feet on these newer type figures. A little bit stuck. The claws are really cool. They're not brittle-ish, but don't knock them too hard. I'm just gonna say. But I think that they're very well executed and some of the best that I've seen, again, with a Wolverine figure. And my God, do we have Wolverine figures. You see this rotation, you got butterfly joints, and I love how the shoulder pad will rotate with the arm or as a separate piece. Some kind of Marvel Legends magic going on there, but I like that, that's pretty cool. The head articulation is pretty okay, we'll say, but I really wish he could have looked up just a little bit more. The cowl will hit the back of the neck and be kind of limited in that sense. So besides the blue rubbing against the arms, that's really the only main complaint for this Wolverine because when you start posing him out, and this took me about five minutes to pose him out, so definitely looks great. My next pose here probably took me about an hour and a half just to kind of get him just right, right? I know you photographers out there, you gotta get your poses just right. I'm joking, it's two seconds. But if you wanna see him compared to, well, let's just say two Wolverines, in my collection, or at least the ones that were closest to me at the time. And to show you up close, couple discrepancies in the coloring of the costume, right? So they've kind of fixed that with this new Astonishing Wolverine. And then you have this other version with the hot claws. <laughs> and yes, other head portraits for the most part that are unmasked will work with this figure. So that's always nice to see. In terms of the height, Lady Deathstrike, Nick Fury, those will line up just right. He is a smaller Wolverine. He's a bit of a newer type body Wolverine. I would say a little bit better in proportions overall, which is nice to see. I'm glad that they're making gradual improvements, but he is another Wolverine. Just keep that in mind. And I want to give a shout out to always.collecting for messaging me and giving me the heads up to get that G.I. Joe Duke that just came out, put the Nick Fury head on there. And you got a little bit more work to do, but it's going to be a nice Punisher Arcade Nick Fury one of these days. But in accordance with Wolverine, the astonishing Wolverine versus the superior Spider-Man. Well, let's see which one stacks up to be the highlight. So in terms of the superior Spider-Man at the higher price point, you do get more accessories, bigger accessories, more of a complete package for the superior Spider-Man. Now you get a pair of web thwipping hands. And I love when Spider-Man figures come with web thwipping hands. But you know the other thing I love when Spider-Mans have it? Webbing. You know, like on the box and the artwork when they have webbing, not having webbing come with Spider-Man is like not giving Luke Skywalker a lightsaber. Why? Why don't Spider-Man figures in Marvel Legends come with webbing? And functional webbing, to say the least. These extra hands, these clawed hands, are awesome. Black on one side, red underneath, really makes this superior Spider-Man look extra sinister. The head portraits has a nice reflective sheen to the eyes. A little bit of a silver kind of reflective sheen. I like that, it looks good. The webbing though amidst the Spider-Man head portrait is awesome. It really does relay home, this is off. Something is off about this Spider-Man. He looks mean and sinister with just looking at you and the webbing definitely portrays that. You do get four Waldos, I guess that's the official name for these claws. <laughs> We've seen it in the MCU, Iron Spider-Man had them, Superior Spider-Man had them. They are cool for any other Spider-Man besides actual Peter Parker, Spider-Man, even though this is Peter Parker, but it's Ottawa, you get what I'm saying. Multiple points of articulation, and I would tell you honestly, just get to know the articulation, all the segments of these Waldos. You don't wanna twist anything wrong, force anything, and snap. You can kinda see the little bit of a stress when you move some of these, and to let you know how they feel, they're more of a solid gummy, 
if that makes any sense, of which you take this in and plug it into his alternate backpack with the four portholes. So again, that's a nice touch. You get two backpacks. You got three prongs that clips into the superior Spider-Man's back. It perfectly adheres to him. And you have a equally as cool superior Spider-Man. It's just an interesting Spider-Man. And like I said, I was interested in this storyline. I think they took it a little bit too far, but in the beginning, it was kind of cool. And I like this costume, the reds, the blacks, all the various webbing. That's cool. Again, makes him look very sinister. If you look at the head portrait. Now, when they revealed this figure, they had said that they're going to do kind of a reflective lens to it. Like he's swinging through New York. You see all the reflections of the buildings. Yes and no. On one hand, I would say I like this. Keep it going. Push it. Let's see what you do on the next round. On the other hand, it's kind of jumbled, but it's still cool. I like it overall. Again, the mask, all the various webs down to the black spider that bleeds into the costume. This backpack right here simply comes off. That's just the standard. It won't be able to attach the Waldos. You can clearly see all the peg holes on his back. And then you have the other backpack, which has all the portholes of which you can adhere all the Waldos. Right here though, I like that they finally gave him the gauntlets. The previous Superior Spider-Man left a little bit to be desired, although they were working off concept art, I believe they said. All the nuances of red within the black. Overall, I think they've achieved the costume that you see in the comic books. In terms of the articulation, plenty in the arms, plenty in the legs, the torso, the head. Everything moves how you would want it, except for the butterfly joints, which I think at least on mine, are a little bit stuck. At first, I thought maybe I was jamming it into the backpack. I'll take it off so you can see. They're just a little bit stuck. One side was stuck more than the other, so go easy, perhaps heat it up. Go the whole neck of toys route if you so desire. Just don't force anything, but eventually you will get some movement, but I can't honestly tell you that the butterflies make all that great a difference. The double jointed elbows, the double jointed knees are all pinless. Again, nice ab crunch, the waist, you can make him do everything that a spider do in terms of the Marvel Legends articulation with some drop down hips so that you can get the kicks out a lot higher, which I totally appreciate. And the legs are ratcheted. So I like that as well. Overall, I'm liking these new improvements with Marvel Legends. As the prices keep going up, I would expect the technology, the ingenuity, the craftsmanship would also follow suit again. The articulation for what it is is perfect for a collector myself, but the overall accessory that he is definitely lacking is, of course, the webbing. We need webbing for Spider-Mans, but you grab the backpack and you put the Waldos in, and this is where I'm going to tell you, get to know it, make sure you don't force anything, don't do it at a weird angle, everything should slip in rather nicely until you basically achieve this, and do it before you clip it onto the figure. Otherwise, it's a it's a pain in the butt, if you know what I mean. Get that going on the Superior Spider-Man and Bingo Bango. It looks rad. He looks mean, vicious. It's a whole vicious Marvel Legends video with the Astonishing Wolverine. But you can get all the articulation points, get him going, and he stands rather well. Now, he'll be a little bit off balance. You'll have to figure it out, of course. But that's part of the fun. You want to pose him out. You want to spend three hours doing so. You want to have him going up against some tracksuit mafia goons. Yeah, you can definitely do that. If you have a flight stand handy, yes, that really brings this character to life as he's... Well, it's right before he web thwips because, of course, there's no webbing to get it going. But how much cooler would that have been? And for all of you wondering... Yes, the Waldos can support him, so you can do that whole creepy pose from the old comic books. They're not that steady, and eventually he will fall over. So that's what I meant by, yes, they're sturdy, but yes, they are gummy at the same time. They work with you for certain poses, but for this one, don't expect it to last too long. And for those of you who are wondering how he scales with other Spider-Man across my Spider-Verse collection... Yeah, he's a little bit on the shorter end, but that works for a Spider-Man. All these Spider-Mans are not going to be the same, but 
It's fun to pose this guy around and he's a good looking superior Spider-Man. And if you wanted to mix and match with other companies, let's say Mezco Toys, which is around the same height usually as Marvel Legends, but it's kind of a give or take kind of sort of thing when it comes to really pairing them up. Yeah, he'll go nice with the Green Goblin. And of course, he'll go with other Marvel Legends largely across the board. So that is going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new Superior Spider-Man and the Astonishing Wolverine, part of the new Hasbro Marvel Legends, the 85th anniversary of Marvel Collection. Every time we talk about toys these days, there's like a paragraph to get you there to describe what we're actually looking at. I would say, if you're not sick of Spider-Man and Wolverine by now, you're probably going to get them and you've probably already gotten them. With a couple exceptions of the paint rubbings on the Wolverine, that would be the main hiccup for me. Otherwise, I think it's a pretty solid Wolverine. He looks cool. I love the extra hands and the head portrait. And everything about the Superior Spider-Man works minus the webbing. So you've heard my thoughts and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Marvel Legends. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, you'd think I'd learned my lesson with the Marvel Legends. Like, just be done, right? Just be done by now. But then a Ghost Rider showed up, maybe a Son of Hulk, maybe something else. We'll see, we'll take a look at it coming up soon. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon, adios. 